is a special edition of NBC10 at issue with Philadelphia Independent mayoral candidate Wally Diop Rockman. Now we're back on NBC10 at issue with candidate for mayor Wally Diop Rockman. I want to get back to the budget a little bit. This city has a pension crisis. Mm. It owes. It's underfunded. It right. owes a lot of money into that fund. So basically it's got about, if my math is right, about $4 billion in there mm -hmm. and it probably owes more than that, closer to $5 billion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How would you fix that gap? Well, that's a complicated question, but I think that in terms of generating more resources for areas that the money needs to go to, again, uh, the question keeps on coming back to uh, uh, an end, a moratorium on this expanding prison and uh, police uh, system and investment in real programs for economic development that would actually generate resources for the city so that it can really start paying attention to uh, economic uh, needs. Well, let me turn this around raise. another way. Let's say you're right. Why wouldn't Michael Nutter want to do that? Well, I think that we see even in uh, the endorsement that uh, the FOP has provided for uh, members of the Democratic Party, Seth Williams, Michael Nutter, I mean, we see a clear relationship there in terms of uh, the connection between his administration and campaign for mayor and the interests of uh, the police and prisons. Uh, we know that there's a lot of uh, money involved, and when I say money, not money that's accessible to the people, but money that's accessible to finance capital, Wall Street, et cetera. Um, and that's also why we see Michael Nutter being very easy on the major corporations, the ruling elite of the city who are not being made to uh, pay the price or to rescue the city from its uh, budget crisis, even though it is the uh, major corporations that have the greatest ability to offset this budget crisis. And how do you think about this on a day-to-day -day basis? Uh, do you think in your mindset, I'm going to keep going about what I've been doing the last few years publicly? You're running for office, you go to city council, you hold protest marches, you do things of that nature, correct? Correct. Um, is there a time when that patience runs out with you and you feel that you go back to the old lines of the 60s by any means necessary? Well, I don't want to say that uh, the old lines, it's an either or type of thing. I strongly believe um, as a mayoral candidate and as a concerned member of my community that the people uh, have a right to be in control of their own resources. In fact, that's uh, part of what you know we say when we say taxation uh, but representation as opposed to no taxation without representation uh, and I think right now what we're looking at is taxation without representation where the people are forced to uh, pay taxes to the city but don't benefit in any real meaningful way um, I do believe that people should have a right to live a normal existence without having to worry about the police harassing them or killing their son um, and the right to live a life without uh, all of the many problems that could and should be avoidable should the city have correct leadership. What level and of crime do you think would be there? You can go to any ethnic group, um, whether it's white, whether it's you know, Italian, whether it's you pick an ethnic group, it doesn't matter what it is, go up and down the spectrum. Uh, people aren't perfect. There are going to be thugs in each ethnic group, people who try to have criminal enterprises. And so are you saying that if you did it your way, I want to get back to this level of crime. Uh, how would you tackle the criminal element in lower income Philadelphia, regardless of ethnicity? Um, it's still going to be there on day two, won't it? People who think I can make more money by selling this drug than by getting a real job. Okay, well, again, and I can speak from anecdotal and personal experience as well as statistically speaking. For example, stop and frisk, as I told you before, 72% of those who are being stopped by the police uh, are black and Latino men, black men in particular. Now, you can't tell me that uh, black, there's some, you know, just innately criminal or thuggish about black men that warrants 72% uh, of the 250,000 people who were stopped by the police last year, uh, you know, we, and they weren't even arrested or charged with any crime. So we know that there's not really a correlation between uh, police uh, locking you up or, or harassing you and you actually being a criminal, but there is clearly a, a process of racial profiling that's endorsed by such statements that have been made by my opponent referring to black youth of the city as uh, disgraces to their race, as he told uh, the church in West Philly in response to the flash mob issue, as uh, is created, uh, there's a general culture of fear and xenophobia that exists in the city that is unnecessary. But I think there's an economic basis to it because those who benefit from prison industry, 
uh, from locking the masses of uh, my people up, they benefit in this general image of black people being the problem that need to be locked up. I'm going to continue on this more on this special edition of NBC 10 at issue on NBC Philadelphia nonstop in a moment. Stay tuned. You're watching the special edition of NBC 10 at issue.